Looks like we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another recreational programming session. How about that? Let's make a little bit of an announcement and officially start the stream as usual, as usual. So, um, red circle live on uh, Twitch. And what are we doing today on Twitch at dot a television website? Today we are uh, exploring Tree Sitter in Jai. How about that? I bet you didn't expect that shit to happen. I, I didn't, for sure. Uh, I'm gonna give the link to where we're doing all that, which the TV slash starting, and I'm gonna ping everyone who's interested in being pinged and who's not interested in being pinged either, uh, because everyone is going to get pinged. So, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you guys are doing uh, today? So, are you excited for today's session? Are you excited for today's session? We're gonna check Tree Sitter. I'm still not sure what the fuck it is. Honestly, <laughs> right? It's supposed to be some sort of a, like a, a pasta library, right? For, for syntax highlighting or something. Like, it's just like, it's super overhyped, but I have no idea what the fuck it is. <laughs> So it's something related to Parson. And you know what's interesting is that we are kind of already doing um, a project related to parsing, right? So we're doing Google, which is Google for C, right? So, um, and um, right now we're using libclang to, to parse C source code. And libclang, to be fair, is a hell of a dependency, honestly. Just for parsing C, it's a hell of a dependency, which I'm not super happy about. So what I'm doing right now, I'm trying to figure out like what could be a simpler a more lightweight dependency for Google, um, right, to replace libclang. And one of the candidates uh, apparently seems to be uh, tree sitter, right? And uh, that's what it is decided to do today, just to check it out. Um, right, so as far as I know, it is possible to use this thing from C, even though the developers themselves don't like to admit that. If you take a look at the list of the language bindings, you won't see C in here. You won't see C in here. <laughs> That's a really funny thing to say. So essentially, it's kind of like a half hidden. You, you can kind of feel that the developers are ashamed of themselves. Right, they're ashamed of the fact that you can use their library for C, so they kind of just like put it away. No, we're, we have nothing to do with this unsafe, bad language now, but like we, we needed to, to interact with other languages, unfortunately. Uh, we needed to interact with other, that's why you can do it. But don't, don't, don't tell anyone, don't fucking tell anyone you can use it from, don't fucking t use Go, Haskell, Java, use whatever you want, don't use C. Like, I'm, I'm joking, obviously, but it, this, this is what it feels like, um, right? <laughs> so uh, the fact that they didn't list that C is sort of like a primary language is kind of like kind of funny, I think. Uh, even though if you uh, go using passes, the first examples you will see are literally in C instantly. So yeah. They're a little bit of ashamed of admitting that this is a C library. Uh, they are afraid to, you know, piss off the, the, the Rust audience. I think that's what they're trying to do. Anyway, so we're going to be checking out this thing. Um, I have no idea if we're going to succeed or not, honestly. But this thing seems to be actually promising, right? Because if you read building library on POSIX system, right? If you read building library on POSIX system, it says just run make in a treatise city, uh, sitting directory. This will create a static library called libtree sitter, blah, blah, blah. Alternatively, and this is where uh, what caught my attention, you can incorporate the library in a larger project build system by adding one source file to the build. The whole library, just one self-contained source file. In 2023, what the fuck is going on? The world is going crazy. Like, yesterday we have libclang with like where one DLL weights 100 megabytes, right? And you have to like on my laptop, you have to build it for one hour. And today we have this thing. The world is going crazy. Are we going back to actually simple software? What the fuck? <laughs> Right, so it apparently one C file and like a bunch of include directories, like you need to have include and stuff like that. And that's it, basically. Uh, but from what I understood, this is just like not enough. This is like the, the framework, the, the library itself. On top of that, you need to sort of plug in different passes. 
uh, for this entire thing. So I, I haven't figured it out yet. So that's precisely why I want to try to do that today. Um, so we're also doing all of that in Jai. Maybe we'll see how we can uh, use this thing from Jai because Jai has a very good C interrupt. It is actually very good. So we, we demonstrated it on previous stream as well. Um, so it should be super easy to interact with C. Even though the developers of Tree Series are shamed of C interface, we still can use it. Right. And let me tell you, let me tell you, as a C developer, there's nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing to be ashamed of simplicity. Simplicity is good. Don't be ashamed of simplicity. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, we got some subs. Holy shit. So thank you so much, the Hugo42, for Twitch Prime subscription three days ago. And uh, add, ent add Entropy, thank you so much for your one uh, 15 minutes ago. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate all of the, all of the support. So uh, let's go ahead and maybe clone this library, I suppose, right? So um, let's just follow this entire thing. Um, to build a library, just go to tree sitter. So we probably have to go to the all of the API functions shown here are declared in and documented in treeseeder api.h. Okay, so here are all of the functions in here and everything seems to be okay. Okay, okay so here they are. So I suppose this is what we need to um, download. All right, let's go ahead and just clone it. So I'm gonna clone it right in Google because why not? Uh, right, so I'm gonna do git clone, but I'm gonna do a shallow clone, right? So because I don't wanna download all of the 4,000 commits, holy fucking shit, right? So, no, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, right, so I'm gonna download only one commit, only one commit, the latest one. There we go. Uh, so how are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? Uh, right. Mm -mm. Clone it like a boss, I already did, so it's already cloned. Uh, is it going to be parser for Jai or parser in Jai? It's going to be, we're going to try to use Tracer from Jai, right? But we're going to be parsing C code. Um, all right, so let me, let me see what do we have in here. Um, now, we, it says that we just have to do a make in here and that should be enough. Um, all right, so we've got some SO files and whatnot and libtree seeder and stuff like that. So here it is, I suppose. Um, right, and also we have lib include tree seeder API, and that should be it. We can try to use maybe bindings generator, uh, but really we don't really have to, right? We, we don't really have to do that. Um, so let me go back in here and maybe create a simple file, simple C file where we can just like try to do that. Um, yeah, so that sounds interesting. So they say uh, that you have to sort of declare the tree sitter JSON function, which is implemented in the by the uh, trace uh, tree sitter JSON library. Ha, huh, that's very interesting. So yeah, you need to have sort of like a pluggable libraries for different languages, for different parsers. Because by itself, this entire thing is just like, does not provide anything, it's just a framework. Uh, we can take a look at what kind of symbols does it import. Uh, for example, there is nothing related to JSON, right? As you can see, uh, there's nothing related to JSON. So this thing by itself is not going to be able to parse JSON, if I understand correctly. Uh, we can try to do something like main.c, from where we can try to do all of that. So essentially, I can just declare this entire stuff like this. Uh, we can probably also include the tree sitter, right? So we're going to include the tree sitter. And for now, I didn't think I'm going to do anything in the entry point, right? I'm going to just like leave it as it is. Uh, I'm, I can print hello world, right? Hello world. Uh, and if I try to compile this entire thing with Clang, for instance, uh, it is not going to find, first of all, tree sitter. Uh, we can try to provide the include path, like the usual thing that you do uh, when you compile a library, right? So here is include. Okay, so this is basically the path that we want to provide in here, uh, which makes sense, which makes sense. So we can just do include this specific path, 
like so. So now it should be able to find uh, all these things, right? And as you can see, it couldn't find printf, and this is because we probably want to include stdio as well. It's not that difficult. There we go, so in the compiles. And interestingly, it works, and it works only because we never call to this function. So I suppose what the compiler did, or rather linker did, it just stripped off this definition because you never call to it. So like, what's the point of, uh, you know, trying to link with this entire stuff? But if we uh, try to do something like this, it will instantly fail. I'm pretty sure it will tell you and declared tree seater JSON because for JSON, you need to have a separate library. At least this is what I understood from, from this entire thing. Um, right, so let me see. So the, the project itself, the organization, um, will have all of these different passes. Would you look at that? You have a passer for Scala, you have a passer for CSS, for Rust, Java, Bash, Julia, PHP, oh my god! And let's find for JSON. Uh, let's find for JSON. So here is the JSON. Uh, when was the last time it was updated? It wa was updated in July. It's pretty fresh, I would say. So let's go ahead and just like clone this entire thing. So how many commits does it have? It has only 83 commits, but we're still going to do a shallow clone. Uh, right, we're still going to do a shallow clone. Git clone, depth one, a boom, we are cloning. Um, I want to actually... So it's kind of difficult. Yeah, it, it makes sense that this uh, that they didn't list C in their chat. Uh, C developers don't need some goofy bindings to make the library work. They can just use it directly, right? So and the C developers can figure out the, all of that by themselves. They don't need any like tutorials or documentation, right? So they just know how computers work. They look at the library. They look straight into the binary and instantly understand how to use this library. That's what being C developer means. <laughs> anyway, I'm joking. <laughs> it's actually kind of hard. Uh, so what we have to do in here, I don't really know. I'm going to literally assume that I have to do make. Is that it? It's just like, it's, 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 is that it? So it created some goofy JSON stuff. Um, right. And we have all of that in here. So, and if we take a look at the symbols in here, we'll probably find, look at that. This is where it is. This is where it is, the tree seater JSON. All right, so let's actually add all of these libraries in here, lib tree seater A. So uh, there we go. We still need to provide this entire thing. You know what? I, I think I'm going to actually create like a shell script uh, binary for all of that. I think that would make sense. Uh, so let's do build.sh and I'm going to just like copy paste this entire thing in here. Uh, tree sitter, uh, sitter JSON, uh, lib tree sitter A. Uh, so and I'm gonna just do bin sh and we're gonna enable tracing, we're gonna enable errors uh, and there we go. Also we probably want to make this entire thing kind of executable and let's try to build this entire stuff and it actually build. Um, right, so I don't even know like how useful it is right now. It's not doing anything except creating this parser, this JSON parser. We can't even know what's inside of that parser but, but we can uh, use debugger to actually look inside of this entire thing. Right, but I, I suppose it will require building all of these things with debug information. I'm not sure if they are already built with the debug information. Do you use minus G? Minus G is not really used. Do they mention debug? They don't even mention debug. These people don't even debug, right? So there's one of these developers who never debug, they just use printf everywhere and stuff. Okay, but we, we're going to be debugging all of this entire stuff. So let me quickly enable the debug information and rebuild this entire stuff with the debug information. And uh, let me just do gf2, gf, uh, and this is going to be just main. I actually don't want to run it from the compilation mode, I want to just run an external command in Emacs. Uh, I'm gonna break on main. I'm gonna break on main. So where are all of my breakpoints? Here are all of my breakpoints. Look at that. Look at that. Look at those breakpoints. I'm gonna just run this entire thing. Boom. We're gonna step one uh, one time, and we're gonna look inside of this entire thing. Uh, so yeah, um, incomplete type. Ooh, and 
the, yeah, the, the most annoying thing is that, like, they literally don't have debug mentioned anywhere in here. They don't have debug mentioned anywhere. So I literally have to... Well, I mean, the, the build system is simple enough to the point that I can just do ggdb for this thing, for the tree sitter, and I can just rebuild it, right? Uh, let's just actually do G3. So I'm going to allocate three threads for rebuilding and I'm going to rebuild everything. There we go. So uh, as you can see, right, so it is using debug information. So the final library hopefully will use debug information, right? Uh, the power of a simple build. Like, I, I like this library. Let me pause for a second. I kind of like the simplicity of this thing. I, I kind of like it. So when I first saw this thing, uh, and I saw the amount of, like, you know, stars and stuff like that. I instantly assumed, and especially the presence of Rust, right? Especially the presence of Rust and uh, tens, of, tens of thousands of stars actually kind of uh, hint me that this is probably some overcomplicated shit, right? Because the, the huge crowd loves overcomplicated uh, things because they think it's it's something cool. If you overcomplicate your shit, it, that, that means you made something fucking impressive, right? I'm kind of surprised to see that this thing's still simple. It's kind of strange, right? So usually people do not appreciate simplicity that much. Right, so usually this, this amount of stars is just like something, something clusterfuck overcomplicated, right? So it's just like, but simple? And also uses a little bit of rust, like how is the thing that uses rust still maintain, like manages to be simple? Right, you, you add rust and rust actually kind of like forces you to pile abstractions on top of abstractions on top of abstractions on top of abstractions. The, the language itself, the semantics of the language kind of kind of forces you to add more and more and more and more things like you you feel like a junkie you, you like oh my god oh, i can see i can see i can feed that type into that interface it also fits into that interface i must implement all of the possible interfaces for my type like more interfaces more interfaces more interfaces and you, you can't stop the language just forces you yeah more interfaces implement more traits more traits more traits you, you can't stop and you have huge library that does nothing just, but just implements traits so <laughs> that's Rust, basically. Uh, so, and as soon as you just like enable this thing, you, you, you fell into that trap. You, you instantly fell into the trap. You can't escape that trap. And yet it's still kind of, I'm surprised. I'm surprised, but I only started, like I only scratched the surface of this thing. So we'll see, we'll see. Uh, okay, good. So uh, let me let me see what we have. So here is the JSON, and for for this entire thing, we probably also want to enable the debugger wagger information. Maybe this entire thing already has a debugger wagger. Uh, I can't really see that. C flags. Here are the C flags. So let's do GGDB. Uh, so okay. Oh, it's kind of funny that. They're kind of, kind of like a pen things in here, right? So they're kind of like a pen. So maybe it makes sense to actually do that in here. Uh, and uh, yeah, tree sitter JSON. <clears throat> I loved when Rust said, it's straight in time and trade it all over the source code. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what happens every time, right? So it's just like, spills the trade all over your source code. Uh, okay, so let's try to rebuild this entire thing. And uh, yeah, that was that was fast. So let's reload this entire thing. And I'm going to look at that. Look at that. We're going to do a run and step one time. And look at that. We have all of the necessary information. We know that the version of that language is 14. We have 26 symbols. I have no idea what the fuck that means. We have 15 tokens. We have zero external tokens and we have 33 states. That's pretty cool. <laughs> we also have a parse table. So we have parse actions. Uh, we have actually one action in here, so we can shift and we can reduce. So symbol metadata. Okay, so it looks convincing, like, like, right? So it's doing something. It's doing something. I'm really happy to see that. So it seems to be working. It seems to be twerking as usual. Okay, that is cool. So let's continue the tutorial, right? So, and see what we can do. So we're supposed to create 
um, oh, we don't even have to create the language first. We, first thing we have to do, we have to create the parser. Uh, right, so is it even, like, the contrast is kind of weird on this page. And I, and I wish there was a way to like turn on the dark theme. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Why well, there's no dark theme? Anyway, so let's create the parser. Let's create the parser. So to not flashbang you like over and over again, I'm gonna actually flashbang you constantly. So I'm gonna open this thing like that. And on the left side, I'm gonna have my source code open, right? So that way I'm not flashbanging you like over and over again. I'm constantly flashbanging you, right? So you adapt only once and then we're good to go, essentially. Uh, so I think that's a very good solution. I think that is in fact a very good solution. So we create the parser and we set the language to the parser. So I'm getting this sort of like a Java factory vibes and I'm not really liking them. I kind of not liking them. So we just created a factory and we're just like configuring the factory. So I don't know, man, I don't know. Okay, so we have a source code. So here's the source code. Uh, that is cool. And then um, we just parse this string. I want to take a look at the definition of TS parse string. So let me let me just go to the include. Uh, it's it's actually lib include, and maybe I could just do a simple grep or n. Let's let's copy paste this entire thing. So I was uh, trying to find the uh, the signature and stuff like that, right? So let's go back in here. Um, so we are calling to uh, parse string and this is the signature. So we're getting the uh, tree. So let me put this thing like that now. So here is the tree. Uh, self. Freaking self. What is this? Python? Seriously? Freaking Python? Okay. Uh, so this is supposed to be parser. Old tree. Okay. Um, use the parser to parse some source code stored in a con uh, contiguous buffer. The first two parameters are the same as in this. Uh, the second parameter in is location the buffer. Um, they don't really explain what is old tree. I suppose it can make like a div. If your tree modified for whatever reason, it may speed up the process of parsing and modification or something like that. Ooh, that is very funny. Okay, that's a very interesting thing. So, but we can provide null in here. Uh, so then we provide the source code. And by the way, we're parsing JSON, right? So we're parsing JSON. So this is a source code and we have to provide the length. str len of the source code. And uh, that's basically it. Uh, we can then... So here we're basically... Okay, so essentially we're just like asserting things in here and I'm not even free string. Are you sure my What is this string? Ah, so we pre-allocated to print this entire stuff and okay, I see. So one of the things we should not forget to do is free the tree. I can already see that. That makes sense. And then we have to delete the parser, right? We must delete the parser. Um Okay, all of that makes sense. And in J, it is going to be way actually simpler, I think. I think it's going to be way simpler uh, because we could have just done defer stuff in here, right? So in J, it is super easy to just do defer and in here, defer. And it looks nice, but it's C, so we can't do shit. So we have to actually put it, uh, put it in here. Uh, okay, so let's do the build script, build script. So let's go to the compilation errors. So this is supposed to be like that, of course. Uh, what else? strlen requires string.h. Uh, there we go. Okay, so everything seems to be working. But if we run it, it's not going to do anything, right? So I'm going to look into how this parser works in a debugger. Debugger wagger. Uh, so let's go ahead. I'm going to do gf, gf main, uh, a boom. Uh, let's break on main, let's run this entire thing, and let's just step through this choice. Uh, okay, so did we get a tree? Uh, did we get a tree? Yeah, boy, boy, this is the tree. We got the tree. 
that easily look at that look at that so uh we have appointed to the root and language and include ranges i have no idea what the fuck it is I, the only thing i'm interested in is probably the root what do we have in here we have the data uh all right so the data is in line blah 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 something you i have no idea what is you so i don't really care so this is the pointer uh, and this is basically the thing, I suppose, right? So it's some sort of like a system information, right? So maybe you're not supposed to even look inside of this thing, uh, right? So you're supposed to use all of these functions to extract stuff, right? So here's the tree, you take the root, yeah, so you're not supposed to even directly take this kind of thing. Uh, tree root node, right? So you have a root node. Uh, then you get the named child, I have no idea why the child is named where there is no name in there. It kind of doesn't make much sense to me, but okay. Um, so <clears throat> check that the nodes have the expected types. Okay, so the, the, this is the types, the test node type, number, and so on and so forth. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, I wonder... I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if we can uh, use that from Jai and also use the bindings generator to uh, create the, the bindings and stuff like that, right? So because I could create the bindings manually and this is literally what we did for STB Selexa, but the, the thing with STB Selexa is that the bindings are so small, it's easy to make them manually. In case of the tree sitter, uh, in case of the tree sitter, it's kind of a pain in the ass, not gonna lie, right? So because... If we just take a look at the includes, so this is API and how many, is, like, it, it's thousands actually, it's not that big. It's a very small library, surprisingly. So the majority of the stuff here are comments anyway, so yeah. Mm -mm -mm. So, but we return things, there's even cursors similar to leap clank. There is even cursor similar to lib clank, so that's kind of interesting. So, and the when we refer to all of the structures, we refer them by. This looks awfully similar to lib clank, the way they do things, right? So there's also this context. So, uh, but it's a lib clank that you link statically, and this is already something that I can appreciate. This is already something I can appreciate. Ah, okay, good. Um, I wonder if one of the passes, like a sitter JSON, provide some things. Well, I mean, probably they don't provide any additional declarations, right? Because if you take a look at this example, it doesn't use any additional declarations from the tree JSON, right? So, and the only declaration that we use, we kind of declare ourselves so the only declarations we care about is in this api right it's in this api um so i need to generate bindings for jai if i want to try to um, use that from jai i need the bindings from jai interestingly maybe i can literally take this stuff and this stuff but do I really have to? Uh, so let's try to use the bindings generator and generate bindings for, um, you know, for the tree sitter. So here is the build script. And in the build script, we're just like building Lexa and nothing, nothing else particularly. Um, so let me take a look at the example on how you're supposed to use the bindings generator. So this is the module bindings generator. So there's a couple of examples. Um, and... Here is what we do. Uh, we use function generate bindings, and within that function, I'm gonna actually copy paste this function and just like put it in here, and also include the bindings generator. So what do we have in here? Um, so we create bindings option. Um, so and for different platforms, as far as you can see, uh, we generate different things, which is fine, which is fine. Um, I'm not even sure, like, I mean, okay, so for, for this entire stuff, 
none of this stuff is going to be executed on my machine, right? Because it's Windows and Mac OS. So the only thing I care about is this stuff. Uh, strip flags and line functions. Okay. So uh, lib path. So array add. And where do I get the lib paths? So it's probably, yeah, okay. So it's part of the options in here. All right. So we import all of the names from the options and we just set in them in here. So this is where we search for libraries. Uh, the library that we care about, actually, I think is called tree uh, sita. Is it? Is this how it's called, actually? Um, yeah, I think we need to call it lip tree sita. Lip tree sita. So that's the library name. System include path generate a default system include path source files. This one is interesting. This one is interesting because um, we have to do the following thing. We need to find where all of that is located. So it is located somewhere in here. And I'm going to just include this entire stuff like so. Uh -huh. So tree sitter and inside of this thing, it's api.h. Uh, so there's also extra flags. Um, I don't think I care about that. So this is like a C++ and yeah, I'm going to just comment it out like so. And then I call generate bindings. And that should be enough. Interestingly, that should be enough. Let's go ahead and just call generate bindings, right? If we couldn't generate bindings, we probably have to say something. Uh, so what did they say in the example? Uh, generate bindings compiler set. This is actually pretty cool, right? So set to failed. And maybe we're going to return out of it so we're not going to do the rest of the building process i just want to see how it's going to generate this entire thing so let's do jai uh first and see if it's going to do the thing um success so it doesn't okay so there is a redefinition of the of the thing right is that what you say or was it just a warning oh it's just a warning because the actual error is in here and declare to identify array add this is because we need to add arrays so this is array and what else do we have? Uh, so there is an error. Um, a race? Is that what it is? Wait, am I going crazy? Um, how is it called? Oh, maybe it's basic. Yeah. Okay, look at that. So it failed. Could not load library leap tree. Okay. Oh, it's specifically looking for the for this thing. So maybe we have to actually provide the full path to that stuff. Uh, how about uh, tree sitter? Tree sitter. Tree sitter. Why in J? Everything just fucking works. <laughs> it pisses me off. I'm sorry. It, it's actually good. I really like that. It, it, it works. <laughs> because like, how am I supposed to make a content out of it? If everything just works. <laughs> how am I supposed to make a content? Everything just works. Disgusting. Uh, let's take a look at the... Look at that. Absolutely disgusting. And it generated all of them. And it's just like... And even do some assertions? Like, what the fuck is this? It... The, holy... The, holy shit! <laughs> this is the best generator I've ever seen, holy fuck! It just works, and like, even imported, like, uh, the things, and like, holy fuck! Ooh! Um, right, so... We've got some subs. Thank you so much, uh, Beat Willy, for Twitch Prime Subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm a programming Jesus. Thank you so much for one bits. Can you make Fortnite for us, please? I want to learn. I already did Fortnite stream, didn't I? On my YouTube channel, right? So, just a second. Let, let me find it for you, just for you, because I like you. Uh, there we go. 
learning Fortnite in 2023. So that's the thing that you're interested in. Right, learning Fortnite. Uh, so I'm going to put it in here and you're welcome. Uh, if my boss knew how productive Jay is, we would all need to swing. <laughs> right, don't tell your boss. Uh, already. <clears throat> so there you go. Fortnite stream. Fortnite is pretty epic, um, especially the standard from 2000. Um, you're welcome, I'm a programming Jesus. Okay, again. So can we just port this example to uh, to Jai? I don't know. Uh, so I'm gonna do. So we already have main.c, right? So this is main.c. Maybe I should call this entire thing slightly differently. Um, we have main.cpp. This is just for testing the Alexa. Uh, this one is tt pro. <laughs> well, ts prob, right? Prob. Uh, tree sitter. I don't know why I uh, decided that the second word starts with T, but it's TS probe. Uh, so, and TS probe uh, J. There we go. So, let's just try to port, uh, port this thing in here. So, this is going to be the entry point, and uh, what we want to include in here, right, we're including Linux, right? So, Linux J, because this is what it generated. Uh, Linux J, so that's cool. And uh, the first thing we have to do, we have to create the parser. And in here, we just do ts parser new, uh, right? And as far as I can understand, uh, you can just compile this entire thing, ts prop j, uh, and invalid top level, I mean, it, you, you have to do load, right? So let's include. Um, this looks like you're trying to um, declare a variable, but the text, oh! <laughs> Okay, I, I see what's going on. <laughs> so the reason why bindings generator worked is because it generated syntactically incorrect J. Okay, so <laughs> this is not a thing. This, you, you cannot do this kind of shit in J. <laughs> uh, right, so um, yeah, what we have to do, I think, what, what I think we have to do. We have to take the O file, right? So, and A file, I'm sorry, and just move it in here, right? So it's on the same level, so we don't have to use like a path uh, to this entire thing. So if I now go here, I can just do leap tree sitter, and then let's try to regenerate this entire thing. So it complained about some stuff. This is because the uh, statements and block that that's fine that's totally fine and if I take a look at that stuff there we go everything is fine everything is fine also no DLL by the way so we detected that we don't have a so file right um, so and let me let me see so we try to compile this entire thing so it's saying and declare it identifier size t really you don't handle size t at all in a bindings generator huh bindings generator bindings generator what the fuck so there is like the whole tables of different uh tab devs to unwrap do you not handle size t you don't handle size t at all there's things like you insert it too and stuff like that. But you don't have size T. Just size T U64. Maybe. Maybe that's a good thing to do. But isn't um, binding generator supposed to do that for me? Um, you need to import. Yeah, but isn't size T just a type dev? Can we just say, bruh, unwrap size t? Can we? Because it's that seems like a right thing to do, in my opinion. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a thing. Chat, I'm gonna do a thing. I'm gonna literally just add size t in here. What do you think? Let's give it a try at least. Let's at least give it a try. 
right? So uh, let's go ahead and see. So there is a size T and uh, we are going to just try to run it one more time. Okay, so that seems to be working. Um, so is there a size T still? Okay, so let's revert this entire, and it actually unwrapped it to U64. Uh, you can't see that, but here it is. So yeah, it was a size T before, now it's U64. I literally modified the source code of Bindix Generator and I fixed this bug. Bug. Like, why defining yourself? You can just modify it, like, because you have the full source code of the binding generator. I think we should stop being afraid of modifying somebody else's source code. What's the worst thing is going to happen if you modify somebody else's source code? It's not going to compile? It's going to wipe out your entire machine? Or, like, I mean, it could, technically, but I mean... Uh... So the, the source code of the binding generator is actually pretty straightforward. I'm surprised they didn't do that in the first place. Like, why? But, I mean, I haven't tried to compile my code. Ah, all right. It stops compiling on the niche OS called Windows. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot that majority of the Jai developers are, like, using this niche OS for video games. <laughs> so, by the way, is a size T not a thing on Windows? All right. So for Windows developers, Windows developers don't really use size T that often. It is like, but why? Maybe, maybe people who, okay. So maybe the creators of the binary generator just tested it on a dependency that didn't have size T, and all of the users of the binary generator solved it by creating a bindings for size T U64. So that's why nobody ever came to adding this type in here because it was never a problem, right? The developers, the original developers of the binding generator didn't really need it. And the users worked around it by just doing the thing that Chad suggested. So that's why it's just like a status quo. Uh, that, that's usually how it gets to this state in software development. Um, maybe, I don't know. So it's just my hypothesis. It doesn't really matter to be fair. We, we haven't tried to compile this code yet. Maybe it's not going to compile. And we we're going to discover the reason why size T is not part of the like unwrapped types and stuff like that. So <laughs> we're about to discover that. We're about to get educated. It fucking compiles. Like, I, this is disgusting. I swear to God, this is just disgusting. Everything just works. Um, anyway, so uh, let's continue, you know, uh, porting the code. <laughs> Let's continue porting the code. So we have to set... One of the things we have to define, we have to define this thing. Uh, and this one is rather interesting, right? So because, well, first of all, uh, this is a function that just returns that. Uh, and it has to be a foreign function, right? Foreign. How do you define a foreign function? Uh, if we take a look at the Linux, mm, foreign, yeah. So you're supposed to supply this foreign lib tree sitter if you want like a foreign function. Uh, in our case, we have to supply lib tree sitter JSON. So that means somewhere here uh, we have to also have uh, lib tree sitter JSON library, uh, and I suppose we can do library uh, lib tree sitter. We already have JSON lib tree sitter json and we also have to say that no dll please right because it's a it's a static one right we're linking with a static one interestingly by the way all of these libraries have debug information so and uh, by default jai also compiles with debug information so that means the final application is fully debuggable in two languages so we'll be able <laughs> to debug this final executable and the debugger will show this source code, and then we will be able to step into this function, and it's going to show seek source code, right? So we're going to full debug information. Yeah. Bilingual debug pog. Yeah, exactly. I, I actually want to see that. I actually want to see that. <laughs> it's actually super fun. Holy shit. I'm having so much fun, surprisingly. Like, I didn't expect that today's stream is going to be this fun. Um, so, and the thing we want to do is just, just this. Right. So there we go. So TS parse set language, provide the parser and stuff like that. And here is the fun part. We can do the source code and just do the usual thing. And on C, we had to do strlen, as you can see, right? So strlen, 
but in Jai, the strings are sized, which allows us allows us to do the following thing. We provide the parser, we provide the null, we provide the source code data and the source code count. Can your C do that? Can your boomer C do that? I don't fucking think so. This size string, motherfucker, size string. That's where it's at. Imagine using null terminated strings in 2023. Holy shit. No string land or anything like that. And then we can reassign all of that stuff to tree, like so. And here is the punchline, everyone. Here is the punchline. We have defer. We have defer. So that means that after we created the parser, we can do defer ts parser delete. There we go. And after we created the tree, we can defer ts tree. Uh, this second ts tree delete. Uh, there we go. So, mm -hmm. uh, let's try to compile that and see if it's going to work. It doesn't even fucking compile. Uh, I wonder why. So, uh, we parsed a declaration, so... Oh, semicolon, okay. Uh, what else? Um, so, okay, so this is basically sinus, number sinus, so this is unsigned, signed, so let's actually say just cast it. Just cast it to whatever is required. So, that's fine and compile. the fucker Ooh. ah huh. just a second okay it uses dashes instead of underscores okay okay i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm a dummy dumb dumb that why are you trying to find s oh am i am i being a dumb um so okay so it is specifically looking for that stuff and in terms of the tree sitter json ah it doesn't have lib in front of this thing okay so there's no lib in here but there is lib in here it's very important it's very important uh, so let's try to do that one more time and boom look at that look at that and we have the final executable so when we build the final so we should have yeah so here it is uh, it doesn't really do shit right but it seems to be working so now the moment of truth gf gf2 uh, ts probe and we're gonna just run it and we're gonna break on main and run it instantaneously uh, we have to step a couple of times right of course and here is the main program here's our main program now if i this is in jai if i step into that thing it's in c bilingual debug bilingual debug can you do something like that with python and javascript imagine if you have part of the code written in python and part of the code written in javascript can you debug step debug return i don't fucking think so because these two are real languages <laughs> oh it's kind of cool um how do i step out um step out so uh we've got the parser we've got the parser and no data fields in the parser disgusting uh all right so we got the source code we got the tree can we see the tree uh we don't have any type information <laughs> ah we don't have any type information i wonder why though uh so it doesn't have information about the types and everything for some reason but i mean yeah we don't we're not really supposed to look inside of these things anyway so maybe that's fine um right so yeah encapsulation right the chat says encapsulation that's what's happening op uh right clean code and everything by default um anyway so that seems to be working so we can already use this thing from jai 
right? We don't really have to use even C to test this thing. We can just try the program all of that in Jai already. So, and that's fine. Um, so now, uh, what I want to do, I want to try to print the these things, right? Print the names and everything. Um, so we get the root. So the first thing we do, we get the root. Um, and the cool thing I like is that um, you don't have to provide the types, right? I, I have the root node, and I can just do ts tree uh, root node, tree root node, tree. That's it. So I don't have to declare the ts node or anything. It's just like, yeah, so that's how Jai works. Um, all right. So then we can take array node, uh, and we take ts node name the child. Uh, root node. I'm still not sure why the fuck it is called named child. Where is the name? Is it named inside of the child or something like that? It kind of doesn't make sense to me, honestly. So we can actually try to go into the Linux and there we go. Get the node's name child at the given index. See also TS node is named. Uh, check if the na node is named. Name nodes corresponding name ru uh, rules in the grammar where anonymous nodes correspond to... Oh, okay. That makes sense. So it's more of like an abstract concept depending on um, essentially the language itself. It This concept can fit to one thing or another. Okay, makes sense to me. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, so we go a little bit deeper actually. So array node is a child of root node and the number node, the number node, is the child of array node, which makes a lot of sense. So we have a root, and uh, in the root we have an array, and in array you have the first thing, which is the number. So they sort of like chain together. This one goes here, array node goes here, right? And then we have a number node. And the thing we do with the number node, we can probably try to maybe print its value. I would like to see um, maybe the types of the node, right? So we can just like go ahead and print all of these things. And the thing about strcmp, right? So that means these things return C strings, right? Those things return C strings. Uh, so now uh, we have to do root node equal s, we can take ts node type root node, and we have to do two string, I think. Right, so that's how we convert C string to um, to the final stuff. Right? So root node, then uh, array node. So this is array node, and then in here we're gonna have a number node. Right, and let's just try to recompile this entire thing. Does it compile? It seems to be compiling, and I'll also recompile one more time. And let's just run it. Of course, I forgot to put new lines in here because I'm a dummy dum dum. Look at that document array number that easily and this library doesn't even have official bindings to check <laughs> uh, this language is offensively awesome i swear to god it's freaking offensive how awesome this shit is it just it just fucking works you know what's fun about this bindings generator uh it's not even implemented by john <laughs> John did, has nothing to do with this thing. I think it was kind of like community. Who implemented it? Uh, right, it's somebody else, and it's just like um, Raphael. I think Raphael implemented it. Raphael implemented. It. Okay, so that's actually super cool. <laughs> uh, so this is yeah, this is awesome. Mm -mm. Props to Raphael. Thank you so much, by the way. Thank you so much. Um, uh, so there's a question in the chat, how to download Jai? That's the neat part. You don't, you can't download it because it's in a, in a secret beta. So, sorry, sorry about that. You have to wait. Uh, you have to wait, you have to wait until it's done. Um, and trust me, it is done. I'm hyping it up, right? I'm showing like the good parts of Jai, but when you hit the bad parts, it's kind of a, little disapp a bit disappointing. And that's why it is not open to public, right? So because it's like, it has this unfinished parts, right? So that you can only tolerate if you are like a, you know, experienced software developer. All right, so it's not, it's definitely not ready for general public. Like I'm telling you, it's definitely not ready. It's kind of cool, 
Right, but you need to know what the fuck you're doing. You really need to know what the fuck you're doing. Um, needs docs and stuff for newbies. Yeah, it's very newbie unfriendly. And the, the problem is that majority of the developer developers on online right now are newbies. So you like just like putting out their language that is like very newbie hostile, even though it's kind of cool if you know what you're doing, but it's very newbie hostile. And I can see why John doesn't want to actually publish it. Like I can see why, but it has a huge potential, right? Uh, so when it's ready, it's going to be fucking killer. Like I'm telling you, it's so fucking cool. Uh, and I hate all of the languages, actually. <laughs> I've seen a lot of languages. I hate all of them. Like this one, like I, I hate it the least. Let's put it this way. I hate it the least. Um, okay, so we can just use tree seeder from Jane. That's cool. And uh, it kind of makes sense. But we're doing JSON parser. We need C parser. We need C parser. Let's go ahead and just grab the C parser super quick. So uh, let me take a look at the projects in here, right? So it's one of the projects, if I'm not mistaken. So it must be something like tree sit uh, C. Uh, uh, there we go. Here it. <laughs> tree sit or C. <laughs> okay. Uh, 2023. Am I right? Um, so let me let me see what we have. <clears throat> I'm gonna do git clone, git clone depth one, not very deep, not very deep, very shallow, uh, and and it still takes time, even though being very shallow. Uh, I hope it's not gonna take too much time to build. I really hope so. So let's do, let's build it with three. Uh, wait. Okay, let's let's read read me. Let's read read me. Uh, see grammar for adapted from not much information. We have cargo tomal. We have grammar js whatever the fuck it is. We have package json. File grammar for tree sit. Um, module experts bindings examples there is examples mm -hmm. maybe something from src uh, oh i remember i think I think we only need this thing. I think we only need this thing. So maybe there is some information about the parsers that we can use. So there are parsers. Okay, so this is the bindings, right? And they are ashamed to admit that you can use it from C, but this is the parsers, right? So, and it points straight into the repo without any additional documentation. This is actually kind of bad. This is actually kind of bad and they don't really explain. They're really ashamed of C. Look, look at how ashamed of C they are. They not only don't admit that C is a primary interface for this entire library, they didn't even document the parser for C. Okay, so um, that's very interesting. Um, so C uh, parser C is generated from grammar.json. Okay. Um, can, okay, let's actually go ahead and try to run uh, this entire thing. So I suppose it's just node grammar uh, JS. Is it going to do something? Uh, <laughs> okay. Can we, so there is a tree sitter, which is parser. Uh, I have a feeling that maybe what we have to do is just clang c src parser c yeah so it cannot find the parser uh, and we can maybe do something like this okay so and here it is um here it is let's take a look at the names does it have 
okay so here it is so that's that's a very important thing so tree sitter c and stuff like that so they could have just added that thing to read me just like this single line saying something like bruh if you want to compile it just do it like that but they're so ashamed of c they try to hide all of that like as much as possible why are they so ashamed of c this is what rust does to you right it shames you for being a good programmer, for actually uh, making good technical decision, decisions in your project. It shames you for that. <sighs> that is so sad. Um, rust and its consequences. Unbelievable. Unbefuckingbelievable. Anyway. So uh, I suppose maybe maybe we can just like copy this parser dot c uh, and build it uh, and build it with a with, with Jaya right because Jaya has this thing where you can build a static library right so you can build a static library. Speaking of, I think I should always try to build this thing. Uh, Let's we'll just always try to build it. Oh, and by the way, so here maybe I should use success variable. Success, like so. So generate bindings. Uh, so the thing about the parser, uh, the thing about the parser, um, sitter c. Uh, let's just copy paste it in here. And then I'm gonna say. Okay, bro. Compile parser uh, parser C. <laughs> parser C, parser C, blad, suka. <laughs> okay, I'm been streaming for two hours already. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm a little bit. <laughs> uh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I like English. I'm, I like English. Um, so we have that, and so I, if I understand correctly, the CPP static library is going to like create like clip parser dot a the, the static library, right? The static library. So let's give it a try. Jiaing uh, for first the Jai and let's go through the compilation. Of course, you have to do something like that. So what else do we have? Uh, statements. Oh yeah. Eh, what you don't like, my friend? What you don't like? Um. Oh, it's a warning. Like it. It's difficult to distinguish warnings and, and things. Okay, so that's fine. Um. Can I provide like include path when I'm building this entire thing? I should be able to provide the include path. So let me find uh, this thing. Uh, modules bind build build cpp. Okay, so there's a build and you just provide this thing. Do you have include paths? Um, so the extra library. Oh, you, you don't really have that. That is strange but also not also not that strange so include okay so here is the include directories but it's not really exposed to you right it's not exposed to you so you kind of have to so this is library files extra what the fuck is extra though um oh it's a extra arguments Okay, we can do that as extra arguments then. Uh, so that's fine. So, but it's very much not a cross platform, I think. Right, so we can do something like this where we can say uh, tree sitter, uh, tree sitter, uh, tree sitter, lib include, yeah, lib include. So I'm actually using uh, a different path right so because I, I assume this is basically the same sort of like headers right that it doesn't really matter um 
So lib include tree sitter. Yeah, so that should be fine. So this is extra. Uh, and let's try to just build that. And it worked. Yes, I was right. So these extra arguments went here. So here is the extra argument that we put in there. So and this is kind of the problem, right? Because if you are on Windows, you obviously have to use like a different thing in here. It would be kind of nice if the build CPP just exposed include paths and depending on the platform, it would just like use different flags. Um, right. So because it already dispatches like different things depending on the platform, right? Right. If you're building static library, it's going to be leap, but it's only for Windows on Linux. It's going to be something else. You see, there is dispatching between Windows stuff and Linux stuff. I think include paths should be one of the parameters, uh, but it's not it's not that uh, you know difficult. Maybe it's library paths, by the way. It's library fi it's library files. Uh, it's library files. Okay, so maybe I'm gonna put it to do extra uh, orgs are not cross platform. Extra orgs are not cross platform. Okay, go. Um, so that's pretty cool. So we have a parser and everything. And by the way, oh, we just it just built it parser dot a, but it didn't create a static leap, or did it? Leap? No, it didn't. Huh? That's very really fun. Um. Yeah. Oh, it created parser A, so then return return O. Okay, that makes sense. Mm. You know what it is? It's a null terminator. That's how Emacs literally displays a null terminator. Found the bug. Found the bug. Uh, so somewhere in the in in the build CPP library or something like that. So when they print in this kind of thing, so yeah, it's kind of cool. By the way, it's it's a very cool feature of Emacs. It's just like this kind of stuff becomes instantly visible, right? It like just screams. Okay, so you have some weird something weird in here. Mm -mm. Uh, so yes, so yes, so yes. But I don't really care about that stuff. I don't really care about that stuff. So I suppose now, um, one of the things we can do, actually, uh, I think we can drop all of these sort of like a toy uh, examples and toy files, like these ones, and just integrate all of them into, um, into the main application, right? So if we go into the main Jai, right, so that's the main Google application, uh, let's just experiment uh, with all of that in here, like, like literally in here. Um, and I'm going to move all of that stuff here, like so, and uh, just copy paste this stuff here. Um, actually, we need to put it here. There we go. And this is Linux. Um, I like to put this, this stuff on top. I like to put this stuff on top. Uh, interestingly, maybe I can even. Yeah, maybe I can even generate the bindings for STB selector uh, as well in the same way. Right, because I did that. Um, yeah. Uh, I did that uh, manually, but now I can see that the bindings generator is actually quite robust, so I might just like use it for everything. Uh, all right, so let me try to go to the build script. Inside of the build script, we just prepare everything. All right, so we build everything, prepare everything, and we are good to go. So let me see. Uh -huh. All right, so there's a couple of warnings in here. So this is unhandled size. Um, is that a... Oof. But this is just a warning, isn't it? This is just warning, but I'm not kind of sure. Generated. We we didn't have that problem before, did we? Um, so did that problem occur after we did something like this? Because I don't remember. Oh, we, we... No, we didn't have that problem before. So it literally occurs if I 
just continue building things. Right, and it just does that. Um, generated temporary. I don't know, man. I don't know. But maybe that's fine. It doesn't say that it's a warning. That's what's weird. It doesn't say that it's a warning. But anyway, so if I try to do Kugel now, uh, it still parses everything correctly. So that seems to be fine. That seems to be fine. Uh, okay, so what if I try to do something like parser, and this is going to be a library, uh, library, no DLL, and this is the parser, right, so I'm just doing that, and we're going to have a tree sita c, which is a function that returns ts language, and it is from a foreign library, which is parser, like so. So it means here, when we set in language, we have to set it to C. We have to set it to C. Um, so if there are any errors during the parsing, I'm not really sure how exactly we handle them. Uh, but we can try to uh, just do the following thing. Uh, okay, so I have the, this idea. I'm going to simply give it main function, like so. Just a main function. Uh, so this is the source code. We're trying to parse this entire stuff and we get the root. And then we can try to print the type of the root. Root node. Um, like so. TS um, node type. Right, node type. Root node. And we're going to do to string because it's not particularly string. So it's something like this. All right. So let's try to rebuild this entire thing. So it's gen regenerating some stuff. And it, okay, it linked successfully. And we can try to do a Google on this entire stuff. And it's a translation unit. Holy shit. Okay. That's pretty cool. Um, so we can try to look uh, at different things. So how do I get the children? Uh, note children count. Okay, so let's see how many children it has. Um, has this amount of children? Um, now let's, put, let's put this way. So ts node uh, child count. So, and we can just do root. How many children does it have? Um, so we can just rebuild this entire stuff and instantly run it. Uh huh. Has one children. Uh, one children. <laughs> English, by the way. Uh, <clears throat> uh, name the child. Uh, get nodes name child. But can you just say as node child by field name? Uh, yeah, so get node child at the given index. So it feels like named children and anonymous children are kind of like in different spaces, right? Because you have two separate sort of like getters for just an anonymous child and not anonymous one. I suppose I, I have to use this thing, right? Just use this thing and don't think about it too much. Um, right. So we can do the following thing. So from zero to uh, yeah this is what i want to do uh, i'm going to be iterating this stuff and then root node it so this is a single child right so this is the single child uh, maybe we can put it like this so this is the root node um yeah then we're iterating the children uh, and here this is the child uh, child something didn't compile uh, as well as i thought Ooh, yeah i'm, I'm an idiot um children what, what was that uh, children 
count. Yeah, no children count. So let's take a look at the children count. Um, uh, mismatched levels of indirection. So this thing is supposed to be uh, like this. So we keep rebuilding the libraries over and over again. I don't think it's a, a good idea. Okay, function definition. This is actually very cool. Uh, what if we just had function declaration? How would it look like? So this is not a function definition. This is a function declaration now. Declaration. This motherfucker is already useful. Holy shit. Okay, I'm, I'm going to show you. Uh, so let's have some sort of file path uh right so gonna have some sort of file path and let's do the path to maybe raylib right L let's take the entirety of raylib um so maybe to do that i'm gonna do raylib include and this thing so i need a full path unfortunately uh and this is gonna be raylib boom so here's the file path so in Jai, what i can do i can do read the entire file file path and uh, here I have a content and it also can return success and whatnot, right? So if it's not okay, just do um, exit, right? So as far as I know, read entire file will log the error in case of an error. So, and here's the content, we don't need source code anymore. So we can just do content. So that's the source code. We, we can actually call it as an original thing, uh, source code right? to make it consistent with what we have. So we're reading the source code from the file now. Uh, and now let's go ahead and iterate through all the goddamn freaking children. So, and see how it's gonna go. God damn it. Oh, read entire file is not available, so you have to actually include the file if I'm not mistaken. Fuck. Uh, redeclaration of file paths. So, <laughs> freaking. Uh, so, yeah, file path is already. Is already taken down below right because we have some disabled code down below uh, right so essentially this kind of thing separates the actual implementation of Google from my experiment code right so that's my usual thing and sometimes it like imposes some limitations in the sense that we have redefinitions and stuff like that but I wonder if I can maybe put some curly braces in here so now they are in a separate scope so it's not a problem anymore Okay, so, and that's all of the things we've got. Nice library, by the way. <laughs> this is all of the things we've got from that header file. Uh, Ah, uh, okay, good. so uh, what can we do? do? Can we get the location of um, of where all of that shit happens? Uh, file path. Um, so ts node row line column location file path. Uh -huh. So we don't really have locations as far as I can tell. TS pass a pass. So by the way, if some sort of an error happens, so there could be errors in here. So how are you supposed to handle them? Um, check if the node, if the node is a syntax error or contains any syntactic error. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm, I think it's just nested inside preproc if dev declaration. You think so? You think it's nested? Maybe it is. Right, okay. So, oh, because it's an inclusion guard. That's a good point, actually. Because it's an inclusion guard and it encapsulates the whole thing. Ooh. All right, 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 all right. So, so we, we can we can test that hypothesis. So maybe we want to have some sort of a function that recursively prints the children, right? The recursively prints the children. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so print children. Uh, here we can accept 
um, node, right? And the node is TS, or is it TS? I don't remember. So uh, Linux um, TS node, yeah. So I suppose it's a pointer to TS node. Uh, and in here, we can just do this entire thing. So this is a root uh, root node, and then we can do print children um, root node. So we basically abstracted that action away, right? We abstracted that action away. Um, so and this thing is supposed to be a pointer, right? So maybe maybe not. That's very interesting. So because. Does it return a pointer? No, it doesn't return a pointer. So it's passed by a value. Okay. Okay, so it's abstracted away. Um, one of the things we can try to do, we can try to go like deeper. Essentially, we can introduce things like level. Uh, and uh, the current level is going to be zero and max level. Uh, right. So maybe we can even do something like max level. Uh, like this, so you kind of have to specify it. Or maybe, I don't even know, so maybe max level by default is going to be 1. Right. So, and essentially, if level is greater or equal to the max level, uh, we instantly return out of that, so we don't care. Otherwise, we print the children. We can also print some sort of a prefix, right? We can also print some sort of a prefix. Uh, of the size of the level, right? So this is going to be level. We can even uh, multiply it by two, uh, right? And essentially, uh, we can do print space, like a single space in here. Uh, so because we want to pad this entire stuff. And then here, we can just put it like this. So we print the children. And then afterwards, we print the children recursively, uh, providing the child node, but level plus one, but keeping the max level. Right, keeping the max level so that way here we're printing like one level deep but we don't go any deeper right we don't go any deeper but now we can kind of control how deep we can go uh so here we can actually provide two of them right so to you know make it a little bit go deeper so and uh, interestingly maybe the actual thing has to be printed in here right maybe we have to do something like this, um, but for the node, yeah. And the padding has to be printed in here, right? So first we're printing that thing and then it goes a little bit deeper. Okay, so it printed only a translation unit. Uh, so level zero, yeah, I think we have to do minus one. So because, oof, this one, yeah, let's put it like this. Um, we don't have to print that stuff. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And there we go. Okay, so there's only translation. So max level, let's go a little bit deeper, like five. Five levels deep and see what we have in there. Uh, segmentation for <laughs> that's very interesting so we got translation unit but we couldn't go any further and this is really interesting because that means on a comment we got like a lot of children um, so let's actually print the amount of children we have in here uh, so this is going to be something like n um, we can even do n equal to that and let's just like print n right so i would expect that common doesn't have that many children um it's the other way around yeah okay okay so yeah that's totally fine so we have this thing but then why did it fail Right, so this is n, um, the faulty address is, why did it dereference null pointer? That doesn't make any sense to me. That doesn't make any sense to me. So if this is a comment, n is zero, so this is not, so it's just gonna return. Um, iterating 
from zero to minus one but i mean that's kind of the point so it should have zero um zero iterations if i understand correctly right so wh why you guys think it should not and is uns that's already a good point by the way that's already makes sense right so <laughs> everyone who before like you you guys know what you're talking about uh okay so that's a good point let's see because yeah that's but i mean at the same time it could have printed a lot of shit um it's it's really weird freaking yeah Fuck me, fuck me. Cast S32. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so we got so uh, number sign is mismatch numbers. Oh, and of course, <laughs> freaking damn it. Um, so that's kind of. That kind of sucks, honestly. <laughs> Finally, we got some shice. Holy shit, that's a lot of things. Um, do we have declarations anywhere in here? Uh, declarations, field declarations. Uh, so I'm looking specifically for just declarations because that's how they called in there. But we've got to think. We've got to think. Um, not bad. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea what the fuck is this, honestly. <laughs> Why there is a node with open parent? There is literally a node which is open parent. <laughs> there is a node semicolon. Why is that? Why are those things nodes? Is this a lexer or a parser? Excuse me. Is this a lexer or a parser? It's kind of hard to tell. Um, so maybe this is because of the preprocessor, right? So maybe with preprocessing, you, you kind of have to preprocess it first. Is that what we have to do? We can try to preprocess it. Um, but anyway, so what if we go even deeper, like as deep as possible? Like, I mean, we can just make the depth of 100 and see how much it's going to print. Uh, because I want to find at least some declarations. Uh, that's a lot of them. I'm not gonna lie. It's going. It's doing things. Uh, all right. So there is a function declarator. There is a function declarator. There is a lot of nastiness in here, right? So there is a lot of nastiness in here, especially when it comes to uh, preprocessor and whatnot. Um, so I wonder if the tree sitter does anything about that. Does it do anything about the C preprocessor? Uh, using passes. Mm -mm -mm. So there's some bindings. Yeah, I can actually take a look at the source code inside. Uh, tree sitter C. Uh, so this grammar preprocess. Okay, so it does take into account the preprocessor, right? So it's part of this entire thing. So I think um, the thing about lib clank is that it's more robust, in the sense that it's probably doing preprocessing first, and then it's like parsing properly all of these things. I'm not sure if this thing will do any of the preprocessing. Yeah, here's the interesting fun thing. What if the um, function declarations are generated with X macros? Will tree sitter actually handle that somehow? So that's a very interesting question because I believe libclank will. Do you need it to? Uh, it's also a very interesting question. Why not? Basically, maybe there is a function, the declaration of which is not particularly obvious, right? And But it still exists, and I want to still search for it. And the fact that it will be able to find that is actually kind of cool. Um, so, I don't know. 
So, and that's the limitation of the tree sitter, right? So I suppose it's not going to just do the actual pre-processing, but you can do pre-processing with the external thing, with something like CPP. Mm. Only as far as it can parse macros, it won't do any pre-processing, right? That's my hypothesis. That's my hypothesis. So I think, like, if I were developing tree sitter, I probably won't do that, right? And as far as I, uh, as I can remember, TreeSeeder was specifically designed for syntax highlighting, right? So it's not really designed for actual parsing of the language, right? So it's just like whatever parsing is necessary to highlight it well enough, I guess, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Like I'm, I'm using this language for the first, this project for the first time in my life. Um, so one of the things we can do, we can try to just like pre-process it ourselves and feed it pre-processed thing so maybe that will kind of work uh, so we can always do something like cpp right so then opt raylib but that adds additional complexity and dependency on an external thing uh, right which kind of sucks in my opinion um, so raylib.h so here is the pre-processed thing it also includes shed ton of these like things which i don't understand why the fuck it includes them um so there is there was a flag in cpp if i remember correctly that actually stops it from doing that but i can never remember how it is called and i think it's not even listed in here maybe it's listed but i just can't find it non-canonical do not canonize prefix file paths do you guys remember what was the flag to stop this thing to to output these hash things uh, minus p people say minus p uh, right so yeah minus p but for some reason it's not listed in here it's a hidden secret flag it's like the fact that it's not listed that's what pisses me off about this thing right like why don't you list it in there you bleep. also by the way I feel like C preprocessor is a simple enough thing to be implemented as a header-only library. I mean, you need only Lexa. Like, it's a, it's a thing that just transforms the streams of Lexems. Right. It's nothing special. You still need to uh, actually parse the infix expressions. But I mean, it's they're not that complicated. So I think if we had C preprocessor as a separate sort of library, similar to how we have Alexa, we could just slap it in here and also use it with a tree sitter. So, uh, all right. So uh, let me output this thing array leap uh, preprocessed. Uh, let's call it pp. <laughs> um, Array lib pp. So everything here is pre-processed and it includes a lot of shit in here. Uh, and let me let me see. So here we're gonna just use array lib pp. Uh, pp. And let's try to recompile this entire thing and run it. Okay. Brrrr. Okay, so there is a declaration, declaration. Uh, this type definition, it's a field declaration. There is something called function declarator, function declarator. A parameter is, it's actually very, it's very fine. You know what I mean? It is very fine. Things like, star being a separate node is kind of unreasonable honestly <laughs> like it's it's so it's too low level like i need broader parsing if you know what i mean right because in case of a clang in case of the clang uh i can just do clang get uh where where was that clang get uh num yeah so essentially i can have a type of the function i get amount of arguments and then i can iterate and get each individual argument 
So, right, it's just like on a very high level, I can easily do all of that. With a tree seeder, it's not that easy, I think. Um, right. But I need to explore it a little bit more because this is like really fine. Look at that. So it's a function declarator, parenthesis declarator, pointer declarator. It's like, it's... Uh... But maybe, it's, yeah, so maybe it's not that bad. So we have a parameter list. So mm. I need to explore the tree seeder a little bit more to see if it's actually a good fit for our project. So but yeah, so I think we've done enough exploration for today. That was kind of interesting. So it is relatively easy to use from Jai. I gotta tell you that, right? So the bindings generator kind of helps with all of that. And overall, the fact that uh, tree seeder uses C to interface, even though they are really ashamed of that. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, it's it's too granular. Th thank you so much. Thank you so much for the word. Like I don't speak English. I'm sorry. Uh, so thank you for for, for correcting me. It's it's too granular. Um, all right. So even though the like tree seeder developers are really really ashamed of the fact that they have to use C to interface with the things. Uh, right, so it, it was very helpful to, to use it from Jai, right? So I think they should stop being ashamed of C. I think they should stop being ashamed of it. All right, so I think that was an interesting exploration, right? Wasn't it? Was it? I think it was. So thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate that. Have a good one and I see you all on the next recreation programming session. And uh, we'll try to do something else. We'll explore, explore something else. And yeah, love you all. Um, all right, this is the other day. And as the footnote for the session, I would like to get our experiment to the point where we can extract actually useful information for our search engine. Luckily, there's not that many things left for, the, for that. Uh, right, so essentially, we just need to find all of the d declaration nodes, right? So if we just uh, recompile the entire thing, right? So this is going to be first jam. And then we're going to try to run it. Uh, I'd like to actually run it in, um, like, redirect all of the output to a separate file because there's too much information, so it's a little bit slow for Emacs. Um, right, so we need to find all of the declaration nodes, uh, and within those declaration nodes, these are field declarations. I'm looking specifically for just declaration. Uh, maybe I should actually try to change something like declare yeah there we go so here here's one of them we just need to find all of the declaration nodes and within them uh we already have a primitive type which i think i i do think so uh is a return type then we have a function declarator right and within the function declarator we have identifier which is probably the name of the function and then parameter list right so and the parameter list is basically the arguments so if we manage to actually get the spelling of each individual argument uh right so we're good to go we basically can plug this entire thing into our sort of like a search engine uh so what's interesting is that all the function declarations they usually have three uh, children, right? The, the return type, probably, I don't know that yet. Uh, the function declarator and semicolon, right? <laughs> it's a little bit silly to have like a semicolon as a separate thing, but yeah, uh, it is what it is and it isn't what it isn't. By the way, I was looking through the API of a tree sitter and I finally found the way to get the location of the, of the node, right? So because on the on the session I couldn't like figure out like there there is no file path, there is no row and column or anything like that, uh, right? So you know how it is called, right? So we need to find ts node, uh, and I think it's called yeah start point, and the location the location in the source code is called point. Can all of the compiler developers just finally agree on the terminology already? Like, Jesus Christ. I swear to God, like, everyone is just, like, reinventing their own terminology for everything. It's just so difficult to, to work with. Anyway, so if we take a look, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. Here's the row and here's the column, like, uh, literally. So, yeah. Uh, so let's actually... Uh, augment our output with this thing. I think that's going to be super useful for exploration and stuff like that. So where is the entry point? So here is the entry point. Uh, this is where we iterate the children. Um, and in here, uh, we can get the point. So 
uh, we are taking the node. Uh, so here it is. And the cool thing is that we already know the file path, right? So we already know the file path. So that means uh, we can just take it from here, right? So this is going to be the file path. This is going to be the row. Uh, and this is going to be the column, uh, right? So I'm going to put file path in here and that may not work because file path is a runtime value. And what we're trying to do in here, we're trying to sort of like do a closure. So it may not compile, but I mean, if we make this entire thing constant, it doesn't have to be a closure. So that should be fine. But in the future, it's definitely not going to be constant. So I don't know, we'll have to maybe pass file path as a parameter in here. So it's not that difficult to be fair. Uh, right, so here's the point. Uh, this is the row and this is the column. Uh, there we go. So let's try to rebuild this stuff. Uh, okay, go. and if I try to run it and take a look at the output, do we have some? There you go. There you go. So there is a little bit of a problem of uh, like indentation. So I think we sh should put indentation maybe. Mm, so it would be nice to actually put indentation sort of like right here. You know what I mean? So maybe one of the things I can do is basically put the printing of the location um, some way here, right? Some way here, like so, and I can just like grab this entire thing and put it in here. So first we print in the location, then we do the indentation and then the actual node. I think that's a little bit better. And let's rerun this entire thing reverse this and test out. There you go. So here's an interesting thing. So as far as I know, Emacs has a minor compilation mode, compilation minor mode, uh, which can turn any sort of like a file with the uh, with a log that is parsable by compilation mode to to this, so I can click and actually find all of these uh, all of these nodes and stuff like that, which is super convenient. I really like that. So let's find the declaration. Uh, it's actually super easy to find. We know that there is always, well, I mean, in case of field declaration, there's also always three of these things. God damn it! Can we maybe find that from the different end? Yeah, there we go. So this is one of the declaration, and there we go. So here is one of the declarations. So what I'm thinking is that maybe. While we're traversing this entire thing, maybe we should only focus on the uh, nodes that have like literally declaration in their name, right? Uh, so it's usually called type, right? So the name of the node is called type. So here what we do, we, we just do TS node type. So, um, and maybe uh, how are we gonna approach this entire thing? If, mm -hmm. Uh, we only want to print the nodes, right, the, the nodes that are declaration. So maybe it would make sense to have type name and just factor it out here. Uh, there we go. So we're printing type name. And if type name is equal to declaration, declaration, only then we're going to print this entire thing. Uh, otherwise, we're going to recurse a little bit deeper. So essentially, we're not going to recurse into the declaration, right? Uh, we're only going to recurse if it's not a declaration. So that way, we're going to have only a list of declarations. And because of that, we don't really care about the level. In fact, um, I think we should stop caring about the level at all, right? Because we want to find all of the possible declaration, right? So that's what we want to do. We want to find all of the possible declarations. So let's don't care about that stuff anymore. So here we do n. n is only needed, well, I mean, it's needed uh, for printing in here, right, to know how many children we have, but it's not that useful of the information, to be fair. To be fair, it's not that useful of an information, so might as well actually get rid of all of that. And since we don't do any indentation, we can just merge this entire thing uh, like so. <laughs> It's kind of fun to see how, uh, as the requirement for the code changes, uh, like the code simplifies or becomes more complicated and stuff like that. It sort of morphs, it adapts to the requirement of, uh, of the thing you're trying to explore. Right, so here we're only looking for declarations, right? We print in all the de uh, declarations, and if it's not a declaration, we go recurse a little bit deeper. Uh, right, so let's go to here. I'm going to revert this entire thing. And uh, it didn't help because I didn't recompile the goddamn freaking stuff. Okay, so. 
compile com compile the languages am i right uh compile the languages so we have some problems in here i'm not oh yeah because when i'm recursing in here i don't have to provide the levels anymore uh okay of course there's also a couple of warnings that kind of pollute the output but then that's that's fine uh -huh. so let's reboot this entire thing boom only declaration and there is 517 of them and if i'm not mistaken the last time when i was implementing this thing for clang there was around 517 functions so yeah we are capable of extracting all of the fun so maybe tracer is actually useful for our thing after all maybe it is in fact useful i kind of like that i kind of dig that so uh all right uh let me do compilation minor mode right because i want to look into them um okay so it found the typed okay huh so which is fine that is kind of cool it recognized this as a function declaration and the clang didn't recognize this as a function declaration because it was not a top level function declaration so it went a little so tree seeder actually allows us to do more things because i'm pretty i'm pretty sure the clang backend won't search by these things i'm pretty sure it won't that is pretty poggers but but the downside of tree seeder is that it doesn't really handle preprocessing well or does it right because the preprocessor for this thing is just um a node right we preprocess it like manually what if we just don't use the preprocessed one so we have a really pp uh let's actually copy paste the one that is not preprocessed it's actually rather interesting okay uh i'm gonna copy paste it in here and uh i want to be able to switch between the preprocessed one and not preprocessed one and see what's exa exactly the difference um all right so now if i run it one more time so it's going to be output um okay so and i'm going to enable the compilation mode and okay so it thinks that this is a declaration and you know why because emacs actually starts to enumerate lines and columns from one because it's emacs <laughs> I don't really know why. So for it to work correctly, we probably want to output like plus one in here. Uh, so let's recompile. Let's actually do Google output txt, right? Uh, and let's revert this entire thing and uh, implement that. Yeah, there we go. So that seems to be working. And this time it doesn't really do the type devs anymore, which is kind of funny, I think. All right all right so that seems to be fine there's actually more of them in here huh but this time it doesn't include type def for some reason type def oh do we have some oh, let's find the callbacks uh callback uh trace callback so they're located at the line uh 908 do we have no it doesn't include that stuff anymore as soon as we disabled preprocessing, it doesn't really go that deep anymore, even though we tell it to go deep enough. That is bizarre. I don't really know why. I don't know what exactly causes that behavior, but I'm going to leave it as it is. So I suppose preprocessing is not that important. Um, okay, so we're looking specifically for the declarations. Um, all right, and what we can try to do now, we can try to see how many children each of the declaration has, right? So uh, here we compute the amount of children, um, right? Uh, children count. There should be three of them, I suppose, right? I wonder if there's a declaration where there is non three amount of children. I wonder if that's a thing. Uh huh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes there's four of them. Oh yeah, it's not three. It's a return type then uh, function declarator then semicolon maybe function Th this one is f interesting okay so um let's print each and individual children in here right let's print each and individual children uh it would be kind of nice to maybe factor out this thing to a separate function um in a sense that like i can use it for any nodes something like print node location or maybe um 
trace node. I think that's a little bit better. So we provide the node. It's a TS node, like so. And uh, yeah, we'll just put this entire thing in here and we're tracing the node. So I can just say trace node, node. And I'm going to put it like that. Then we iterate through the children. And uh, here, instead of printing the children, we trace that specific node in here, right? We're just tracing that node. It would be kind of nice to maybe pad it a little bit, but the padding shed should be put some way here. So maybe I can do something like pad, which is initially zero, and I can do zero, uh, pad minus one, um, right. Oh boy, so that means I have to separate this printing yet again, unfortunately. Uh, but that's fine, I suppose. It's not that big of a deal. I can do something like this. So this is the type name and then something like this, uh, which is going to be just type name, just type name. So uh, and that way I can just do trace node. But if I want a little bit of a padding in here, I can do like four. Uh, right, and it's going to work, hopefully, and it's going to work. Okay, so let's try to recompile this and I think. Uh, uh -huh. So, warning statement, undeclared, something is undeclared. Uh, type name, uh, and this is because we have type name in here, so I probably want to do this kind of thing here as well. Do we really need type name anywhere? Okay, so we don't need it in here anymore. Well, we do need it for declaration purposes, so... Uh -huh. Okay, so this is going to be output. Uh, let me take a look. Uh, and there are some nested declarations. Wait, wait a second. I'm an idiot. Yeah, I am an idiot. Instead of actually printing the goddamn children, I'm printing the note again. Of course, I can't see shice in this mist. Of course. Of course. Oh, silly me, silly me. Um, okay, so I'm going to do revert this thing and there we go. So the type identifier error. <laughs> Why there is error in here? Is that because of the type defin... That, that is bizarre, my nephro in there. That is bizarre. Uh, let's take a look at this error. Um, it's probably because of this shit. God damn it, yeah. Since it doesn't do any preprocessing, it may error out on those things. But it kind of recovers anyway, right? So it kind of recovers anyway. Uh, so this is the... Yeah, it considers this a function type. And since we, it already parsed the function type, it errors on this thing, but then quickly recovers and continues. And it, it, it needs to be uh, recoverable because it's just like for syntax highlighting primarily, right? So it's not for robust compilation or analysis or anything like that. Which has means that you need to have the preprocessing. You just need to have some sort of preprocessing to expand all of this stuff. Otherwise, all of that is going to error out, of course. Oh boy. Uh, okay, we can preprocess, right? So let's actually go back to preprocessing. Let's go back to preprocessing. At least now we answer the question whether we actually need preprocessing or not. We actually do. We actually do. Okay. Uh, uh so this is the output so let's revert this entire thing and there's no errors as far as you can see yeah so as you can see there is no errors which is nice and uh compilation mode and let's go to this entire things so uh as far as you can see all of them uh have three children right so all of them have three children i wonder if this declarator like with more it's kind of difficult to tell because there's two thousand of these things uh right so we can do the following stuff as we print everything we can assert that n is always equal to three if it's not it's going to crash right so and uh since we're always printing this thing we'll instantly see uh if there is thing that breaks that assumption is going to be the last one that is printed um okay hopefully Okay, so that is pretty cool. Uh, let's go here and do revert. And what's the last one? Uh, pointer declarator. Okay, so let's take a look at this declaration. Type qualifier pre oh, and then point. Hold three things. Hold three things, and it didn't even. Well, yeah. 
and there is no function declarator like where is the function declarator <laughs> there's no even a function declarator what the fuck um usually oh because it's a point to declare oh my god you have to do so many things just to get it in oh seriously so yeah it's either function declarator or pointer declarator my god and you have to literally parse the return type yourself you can't just say okay give me the return type and it will give you the return type all right so you literally have to parse this entire thing yourself okay so maybe we can take a look at the things that have bigger than n B bigger than three i'm sorry right so bigger than three um we always we probably always want to compute this kind of stuff okay so let's do the following thing uh, if n is bigger than three only then we're going to print this entire stuff i want to find all of these situations like that and just like assess them uh, right just to understand what is going on in there because i think it's kind of interesting mm -hmm. so let's review this entire thing and this is primarily yeah it's primarily pointer declarator but the interesting thing is that we may never know what other cases will have to handle so essentially uh we know that now we have to handle a situation when there's a function declarator and pointer declarator uh but what if there is something else it's just like maybe a ray -leap doesn't um, encounter that such situations right it doesn't encounter such situations and it like feels like i'll have to constantly patch this thing so yeah tree sitter is too granular for what i'm trying to do so and i'm thinking that i'm not gonna use it uh, i'm thinking that i'm that i'm not gonna be using it uh so yeah i'm gonna stick with leap clank for now and we'll see how it goes so i guess that's it for for the session thanks everyone who's watching right now i really appreciate that have a good one and i see you on the next recreational programming session with azuzin i love you mm -hmm.